I hope you we're going to come back to we're going to start talking about tags and how they apply in Splunk. I hope that you are actually following the video channel down below and not just picking this video out and it's in a uh, in a vacuum. While I'm sure this will be helpful in any case, the real point is we have a bunch of videos helping to make data models uh, easier to understand. And when you're trying to build data models, there's a lot of complexity there. And I didn't want a really, really long video. So look down below. I've listed the 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 playlist that has all these videos in order. And I highly recommend watching the playlist. But uh, anyway, let's move forward. Um, we're going to assume you've seen the video on uh, on data models, the concept of how we restrain our indexes and make them fit. We, we talked about tagging data last time using an event type. We're going to briefly cover those event types again. So if I come into event types, we made a event type called network communicate data and it gave us the tags communicate network and it's looking for index equals lame training source type equals lame con. Basically, every time I write event type equals network communicate data, every time I write this in a query, it's going to, Splunk is going to replace the code when it sends it to be processed with this. And we've tagged it, we've given it a color and given it a priority and we're good to go. So if I, put this query in here, event type equals network tra uh, data traffic head 100. I get back source type of LameCon, index of lame training exactly like I expected. And we see nice orange fields over here because of those, it met the, those conditions. And that is really cool. So event type is a way of grabbing a whole bunch of data and saying this is the this is the data I want to look at. Um, you can also do something with these tags and I'm going to show a different set that we did before and that was we looked here and we said systems of interest talking outbound. We took that very first piece and we added in destination IP of 10.0.0.18 and direction equals outbound. And so it, we just gave it more details in the event type and we tagged it as suspicious. You could use this tag suspicious in all sorts of things. That's what's really cool about it is now what if I have, uh, now I want to go look for anything that's considered suspicious. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to just go index equals did I I can't spell never write a word you can't spell it's just I don't even know if that's spelled right nope clearly they're not using the same so now if I write that I can come back with every log that was deemed tagged suspicious really quick way of searching stuff and what's cool if you haven't if you didn't catch that I could go write another event type and tag it as suspicious I could write a whole bunch of rules and call them suspicious and now when I write queries or I could get even more complicated I could do a whole bunch of things I just want to search on the data that is considered suspicious and that is a great way of using tags to write a very simple query that pulls back stuff that you've learned over time and I've how identified as a certain category. And so tags, not only are they useful in data models, they can be used to uh, identify things. You could tag things as certain inventory pieces. You could tag saying, hey, this is my domain controller. This is my indexer. These you can tag things, and then you can get back those that information at a later time. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I hope this. If you like this, please like the like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, every little bit helps. Let me know what you guys like, what you guys are finding useful, and I hope this helps you go, move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja.